In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior be with all of you. And with your spirit. Good morning and welcome. And through the goodness of television, we gather in all of our thousands of places that you are to celebrate on this second Sunday of this Advent season as we continue the journey toward the great festival of Christmas. So let us take a moment to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred liturgy. As we call to mind and acknowledge our sins, let us open our hearts to God, God's saving love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to restore peace and harmony among all. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to be ready for your coming. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On that day a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his waist, and faithfulness a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together, with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den. And the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on all of my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Justice, Justice shall, shall flourish, flourish in his, in his time, time and, and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice, justice shall, shall flourish in, in his time and, and fullness of peace forever. Justice shall flower in his days and profound peace till the moon be no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Justice, Justice shall flourish in, in his time, time and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor, the lives of the poor he shall save. Justice, Justice shall, shall flourish in his time, time and fullness of peace forever. May his name be blessed forever. As long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Justice, Justice shall, shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, Whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, 
that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another then as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, Therefore I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. All flesh shall see the salvation of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, a voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At, the, at that time, Jerusalem, all of Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath, produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to even carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So again, as we celebrate this Eucharist this morning on this second Sunday of Advent, just coming off of yesterday's wonderful annual celebration of Advent Christmas, our annual apostolate gathering at Monroe High School. So what a gift it was. And a huge thank you to all who were able to gather, but all who who volunteered, the many people from throughout our diocese who made that possible and a wonderful, wonderful day. So thank you and a great spirit of gratitude for the rich blessings of one of the significant events among many and growing events of the apostolate to persons with disabilities, the apostolate to the handicapped. And so we meet this day, this our Advent companion, John the Baptist, very much a part of this season. We, just a few things about him, reminding us that his parents' name were Elizabeth and Zechariah. Zechariah was a priest of the temple. Elizabeth, we know a little bit about, was a relative. We don't know how close, but a relative of Mary, the mother of Jesus. It was through a miraculous kind of birth that John the Baptist came into this world miraculously considered because Elizabeth and Zechariah were considered to be rather old to bear a child. They don't say how old that was in those days in the first century, but they, it was still considered to be a miracle, but also a sign that this was one very special young man being born into the world. There was some speculation down through the centuries of scholars that 
maybe John the Baptist and Jesus, even though they would have been related in some way, that they maybe hardly spent any time together. One being the fact of the distance of where they lived in Israel, but um, that they had very little time together. It even says in one place in the fourth gospel that John really admitting, I really didn't know him, this Jesus, until he came and was part of his life. And so we do know from the gospels that John lived a, a rather austere kind of life out in the desert. And he dressed as Elijah the prophet with a kind of a hairy coat or a, a garment that he had in his diet was locusts and wild honey. It doesn't sound really attractive to me, I must admit, but I'm not sure what comparison there would be for me, but I guess locusts in those days, even today, are considered to be um, critters that have great amount of vitamins and vitality to them. But anyway, he was considered to be a great, <clears throat> a great, great prophet. And it's interesting that it was John who was using his prophetic voice as the last prophet of the, of the Hebrew scriptures of the Old Testament, not at the temple proclaiming that this preparedness and make straight the path, but out in the desert in a way of saying, this is something new that God is doing to our world and to all humanity with proclaiming the birth and the presence of Jesus Christ, that word made flesh, something new, which again we mentioned last week is very much akin to what our God is always about, is that recreative, that creative goodness and energy of bringing a newness and for us to stay awake and alert for that. And so John's message in the gospel this morning was very straightforward very straightforward and he was an honest kind of guy and he challenged everybody from just the ordinary quote unquote kind of folks who gather but also the the leaders of the temple and all to repent from their from their lives and a repentance that really had a lot to do with our willingness to change their hearts to be able to recognize this coming messiah the messiah who's right in their in their midst and it was this message of, of call to repentance, of change of heart, that was meant to be that, that goodness of a whole reversal of that original sin that had turned people away from God. And it was a call to change our people's hearts to make God number one, to make God first in all of their lives, then as well as today. And so it's in that we hear that change of heart and a willingness, and again, to hear the vision of Isaiah in that first reading, the vision of God's wish list for all of us, that the wolf would dine with the lamb. I mean, that's just one of those extremes that of heart of imagination, but to restore true peace and justice and harmony among all peoples. And so John was not hesitant to tell people, you know, gang, we're sinful and we need to change our lives. You've been, we've been unca unfaithful to that covenant with God that sometimes piety is kind of fake and it call to honesty and a deeper sense of faith. And heart, hearts sometimes become hardened to being open to God's grace and God's work in our lives, to make room for God, room for other people. And so that's the call of, of John the Baptist. It's the call of Advent in this special season that we continue to prepare for the great festival of Christmas, of God present among us, but wanting to do new things in our lives. So we need to get rid of and be willing to change our hearts and change our focus to allow God's grace to truly influence us and so change our world and to keep us focused on the goodness of who God is, but God's wish list for us to, as a people to really live in the kingdom of God, of peace and of harmony. So listen again to those descriptors of Isaiah. That's the hope and the goodness that we hang on to each and every day. I believe in one God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth, of all, all things, things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for Jesus coming to us, we pray for our needs and those of the whole world. That we may be heralds and examples to everyone of the beauty and goodness and the truth of the gospel as we prepare the way of the Lord this Advent season, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Morlino, and the ministers of all faith communities, may they prepare the hearts of all peoples around the world for the coming of its Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all leaders of local, state, national, and world communities, may they work towards peace, justice for all, and care for the neediest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the Apostolate's Advent Christmas celebration yesterday at Monroe High School, may the Lord especially bless the volunteers and caregivers who made the day possible. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that God will bless all persons with disabilities and all who suffer in any way. And may they be assured that the Lord loves them and understands their challenges of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Sean Olstrom, the special intention of today's Mass, and for all who have died, that they may live forever in God's eternal mercy, love, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And relying on his love, we ask that God will hear and answer the personal intentions of our own hearts. We now pause to pray. And for these two, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of promise and encouragement, we turn to you for the energy and commitment we need to make straight the paths for Jesus' coming. We seek wisdom and understanding, knowledge and strength, Give us what you have promised. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you, God. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. 
It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all of the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We profess Broken, your death, death, O Lord, and profess, profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until, until you come, come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Please minister the Lord's word of peace to those who may be near you. Peace be with you, Mark. And with your spirit. Thank you. Peace be with you, Anders. Thank you. Peace be with you, Jeremy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass has ended, we go in Christ's peace. Thanks be to God. We thank Bishop Morlino and his brother priests, the nurses and caregivers, the cooks and drivers, the diocesan choir, the entertainers, and the volunteers who assisted in making the Advent Christmas party yesterday truly one of sharing in faith, food, fun, and fellowship. Most importantly, we thank those of you who were present for sharing your lives with us. As always, we appreciate the generosity of the owner, management, and staff of WISC-TV who make possible this liturgy of worship every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. right here on Channel 3 for persons with disabilities and all who are not able to gather for worship at their, at their church. Monsignor Larry Bakke, the pastor of St. Clair of Assisi Parish in Monroe and our faithful director of the Apostolate to the Handicapped, was our presider of worship this morning. I am Mark Kaisley of St. Maria Gretti Parish in Madison, and Jeremy Swatzak and Anders Clark of Our Lady Queen of Peace Parish in Madison were our acolytes. Our music ministry was provided by Sister Bernadette Prohaska of the Franciscan Sisters of Perpetual Adoration, a ministry that truly enhances our worship each week. Nancy Hallida interpreted the Mass for the Deaf of our television faith community, and the Apostolate provided closed captioning. May you have a beautiful and blessed week. And during this Advent season, may you prepare the way of the Lord in your hearts and in your lives.